All right, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm not at my door this morning, but I'm inside a door, actually inside the door of my son's house in Single Mountain, Tennessee. And in this house, we discovered a really big spider. So today's episode is going to be about some of the largest spiders that you can find in the United States. And I'll tell you some things about its biology, its bite, and things you ought to know about this particular really big spider. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So here's this huge spider that I found in my son's house here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. How did I catch it? Well, the night before, it was about nine o'clock, I was walking down the hall, and I thought I felt something touch the front of my toe. I was walking out of the corner of my eye. I see something take off flying at a super high speed and disappeared into the depths of the pantry. So I didn't know it was a spider or a mouse. I just wasn't sure what it was. Lo and behold, the next morning, there's the spider in the stainless steel sink in the kitchen. So the sink acted like a tiger trap. He was not able to get out once he fell in there. So I grabbed a glass, a piece of cardboard, put the glass over top of her and slid the cardboard underneath and I got my spider so I could do some close-ups. Now to make these photos, I also got a Pyrex tub, took some pictures in that and put glass Pyrex and then also a stainless steel pot. I used that to try to get better light and some more close-up pictures. And finally, after I'd taken all my video, I took it outside and released it. So I have these outdoor photos as well. So what kind of spider is this? Well, it's a nursery web spider. And nursery web spiders have various uh, types. And one of them is the fishing spider. The common name of this one is the dark fishing spider. And its scientific name is Dolomedes tenebrosus. Well, how do you ID it? This spider is so big, it's often mistaken for tarantulas and wolf spiders. Wolf spiders are the other spider that can rival this one in size. So look for this large size. Its body can be up to an inch in length, and its legs, when they're spread out, can cover up to three and a half inches. Look for three W's or chevron markings that look like W's on the back of the abdomen. Look for alternating brown, red, light, dark bands and spines on its legs. And the ultimate ID is if you can get close enough to look at its eyes. Different spider species, different spider groups have different eye arrangements. For example, a wolf spider has two rows with the largest are two eyes in the very top row. The fishing spider has two rows that curve upward and the largest eyes are all about the same size. There's four of them in that top row, like you can see here. So what is this fishing spider doing in the house? Well, fishing spiders typically live near bodies of water and lakes and ponds. They can run across the surface of ponds like water striders, and they can use the surface just like a web to detect uh, vibrations and ripples in the surface. And they can tell the difference between a leaf falling in and an insect struggling at the surface. They will run out and catch those, and it's called fishing spider as well because they can actually catch small fish and tadpoles as well because of their large size, they can overpower it. Well, this particular species, the dark fishing spider, is more likely to be away from water and independent of water. They like to live in the woods and they're often found on trees. They're nocturnal like wolf spiders. They prowl and hunt to capture their prey. They don't build webs. They are, however, in the nursery spider group, and they will make a web for their egg sac that they'll carry around for a period of time. And when the eggs are about to hatch, they'll build a nursery web for that egg hatch, 
and they'll have up to a thousand offspring come out of that egg. They'll guard those hatched eggs, those little spiderlings, until they make their first molt and then begin to distribute and spread out themselves. Another interesting aside fact on this is that after copulation with the male, the female will eat the male, providing nutrition for their eggs. So these spiders, while they live in the woods, are known to enter homes. The next question people ask is, do they bite? Well, they're big, they've got these really big jaws, and you can see the sharp ends on those jaws. And with their size, they can physically bite a human. So all spiders have venom to subdue their prey. This venom that the fishing spider has is not a systemic venom like in the black widow or the brown recluse. The bite will be more like the sting of a bee or wasp, with no more lingering effects than a bee or wasp sting, unless, of course, you're allergic. Looking in the literature, there is virtually no known spider bites from this spider. I found one reference to a human being bitten that dated back into the 70s. So this spider is very non-aggressive, very unlikely to bite humans. It will try to run and escape unless, of course, you put your hand on it or just stepped on. And its bite is not considered harmful, more like a bee or wasp sting. In its natural habitat, it's amazing how well they are camouflaged on tree bark. I was watching this spider as he disappeared into the woods. I saw him climb on a couple different trees. They are classified as a tree-dwelling spider, and they just seem to disappear into the background. If I take my eyes off it for a moment, it was hard to find it again. So this spider can show up in homes. They do enter homes, I think particularly in the fall, maybe looking for a place to hibernate or simply another place to hunt. And when it does, it can create quite a stir because it's a large, hairy, and really scary looking spider. And you've seen in my close-ups, it's got some serious looking jaws that it has too. But at least you can rest assured that it's very unlikely to bite. And if it bites, it's not deadly, it's not going to create problems like a black widow venom or brown recluse venom can do. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door here in Single Mountain, Tennessee about one of America's really big spiders. I hope you enjoyed watching and remember if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember I cover all things nature from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.